Hey KU fans, welcome back to KU Sports Extra, another weekly episode of your favorite show. And I know it's your favorite show. You don't have to write in and tell us. You don't have to keep flooding our office with emails. We know and we appreciate it. Tom Keegan, Matt Tate, let's go good news right away, Tom. And the good news, at least from where I'm sitting, it's been a fun football season. It's been really entertaining ever since Clint Bowen took over. And there's been some new hope and energy and all that stuff. But I'm ready to get this coaching search going. And after Saturday, it will really be on. That's the final game, KU at K-State, 3 p.m. And once that's out of the way, Clint Bowen becomes a candidate, just like everybody else. And it's going to be real interesting to kind of dive headfirst, both feet into that search, and find out what the heck they're going to do. And the bad news, of course, is that My Mother, the Car reruns are no longer your favorite show. Well, you all may think my story is more fiction than it's fact. But believe it or not, my mother did decide she'd come back as a car. So <laughs> your second right. favorite show, not but bad. more bad news. <laughs> one of the worst weeks in the history of KU athletics in terms of on-field and on-court performances. Losing in basketball to Kentucky by 32 points, and then losing to Oklahoma by 37 points. And, and big men who run well just ran all over Kansas in both games. Yeah, wild to see that in the same week, but really, really cool to be there for an NCAA record. I mean, that was phenomenal. You could tell it was coming from a mile away. In the second quarter, you started thinking, this is going to be yeah. a threat today because yeah, they were just blowing KU up. The and line. then uh, cool to see Samaje at the uh, garage where a burger joint in Norman we like to go. And there he is, just being as nice as can be with all the yeah. fans who requested pictures and autographs. Very understated, nice guy. And I turned to you and said, look at him. He looks so fresh. He doesn't even look sore after running for 427 yards. And you said, oh, well, of course. Nobody touched him. He didn't get hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cool to see, though. He seemed like a great guy, and his comments were fantastic after the game. Uh, just real appreciative of the opportunity. He wasn't rubbing it in or anything like that. But uh, and, neither, and neither was Bob Stoops. Right. You know, right. Monty Ball got on Twitter, and I replied to him yeah. because he said, hey, our guy did it in three quarters. He played the fourth quarter. Well, he played two minutes and 58 seconds of the fourth quarter. There was nothing tainted whatsoever no. about this record. No, and it was two carries, I think, in the fourth quarter. So yeah, he busted big a big one. Deal. 32 yeah. yarder or something like that. Well, bad week for sure for KU. I mean, uh, that's definitely bad news if you're a KU fan. And it's bad news if you're Bill Self. That takes us to Lost in Translation, where he talks about getting a little mad about the bad. Let's listen. Well, I, you know, I think a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, coaches go through different uh, moods where they're uh, mad, and usually mad doesn't help you win. Uh, what you got to do, you got to get better and correct. But as you get better and correct, usually you become more mad. Uh, you know, going through what going through that. But translation, I'm only human. Of course, I'm going to get mad when I see <laughs> stuff like that. And he is only human. Right. Sometimes you forget it because he's rattled off 10 consecutive Big 12 titles, and it's going to be really hard to get the 11. Yeah, and, I mean, those games matter more, too. When, you're, when he's coaching against Coach K or Calipari, I mean, those have always meant more to him. So there's no way he was happy about Coach Cal putting it, putting it on him like that. There's, there's no way. I mean, that added to it for sure. Yeah, and he knew that, you know. It was coming. <laughs> what was coming after, the, how Cal painted the game. You know, it was all platoons. Yeah. Teams that play zone will give us a tougher time. Just rubbing it in. Yeah, good stuff <laughs> for sure. Well, let's talk uh, Breakdown Street real quick. We've got three basketball games this week. You'll be down there in Orlando, and then I'll be over in Manhattan for the football game. Uh, with Benton. Oh, yeah, with And Benton. I'll be with uh, Gary. We've got to get Gary on the show at some point. It's not looking too good. This No, he's booked this week. There's no yeah. way. Uh, you think it'll happen, though? I mean, I know we've talked about this. Both it's going to happen. Do you think? It's going to happen, but I don't know if it's going to happen in this calendar year. I just don't see it happening before out of time. the new year. Yeah, we're running yeah. out of time, and he's the guy's popular around the new year, too. Yeah, and the more it gets into the season... The higher is negotiating power. There's room. There's room at this table. We could easily squeeze another we body We could do here. it. So uh, I hope we can. But let's talk about these games real quick. Um, the, the first one is KU at K-State football. I think that the embarrassment factor is big. These guys were not happy about that record being set against them. They were not happy about 
playing that way for Clint Bowen, a guy that they've been playing hard for the whole time. And, and he said Monday that it wasn't an issue of playing hard or not. It was just not playing smart. So I think you'll see a, a very refocused football team. I think they match up better with K-State for one. K-State's no offensive linemen aren't monsters quite the way OUs are, at least not physically. They play tough. They don't have a great running game, let's no. say, or even a good running game. Right. And Kansas is better at defending the pass than That's defending exactly the run it. Their because strength. of their very good yeah. corners, and Michael Reynolds is pretty good at bringing some heat. That strength. Tyler Lockett is a big-time strength for the Wildcats, but so is Ja'Cory Shepard and Dexter McDonald. So uh, that'll be an awesome matchup to see. And then the basketball matchup, we don't know exactly who they're going to play as this thing progresses, but what are you looking for there in terms of just what Kansas does and, and how they play three games in four days? Well, you, you know, you look for Cliff Alexander to, to figure out how to make himself available. Yeah. Because when he gets the ball, he's such a beast. He's so explosive. He's got those long arms. He may not look close to the basket, and all of a sudden he's dunking it because right. his arms are really, really long, like seven foot three. Uh, so, and you're looking for if you can find a way to get uh, Devonte Graham and Frank Mason playing together more often. Yeah. That became a little less available once Connor Frank Camp transferred. But Frank Camp wasn't going with the program. He wasn't buying in, and, and you have to open the door for guys who aren't buying in to walk right out. Sure. Well, the other thing, too, the one thing coaches and players want to do after they get whipped like that is play. Yeah. And, yeah, KU played Monday night against Ryder, but now they get three games in four days. That They're going to love that opportunity. They'll tighten up. They'll be in a hotel together. They'll be team bonding, all that stuff that comes with that. Plus, so, the best yeah. thing about playing three games in four days means you're not spending a ton of time in practice. Practice, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great point. Well, let's do prediction time real quick. Uh, give me a score for KU, K-State first, and then we'll kind of predict the uh, Orlando Classic or whatever it's called down there. Football first. Uh, football first, I'm going to go with uh, – 31 to 17 K State. I think uh, that KU will be somewhat competitive. Uh, we'll bounce back from last week's bad performance. Yeah. Wasn't a great game as a defensive coordinator for Clint Bowen, who has so much on his plate. Right. I kind of thought maybe they'd bring in a defensive coordinator when when you, you do that, but they didn't, which is fine. Yeah, and for the most part, he's handled it well. That, yep. that was a bad day all the way around. But I'm with you. We're similar again on our score. As scary as that is, you've seen the sock photos of Tom playing foot golf or whatever it was. It, it's scary. It is scary, it is scary. Mm -hmm. but I've got 34-20 K-State in this one. Very similar again. Very similar, and, and I just think that it'll be one that KU can go out on feeling good about, but not one that they're probably going to win or, or really even threaten the way they did against TCU or anything like that. So uh, let's talk basketball, though. Three games. In four days. I think we've said that. Have we said that? Three games in four days. How many do they win? Are they the champions of this thing? I think they are the champions, although Michigan State is in it. Michigan State's always tough. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, Trice is playing great. And, of course, Brandon Dawson is a really good player. Trice is awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. You know, uh, it's not maybe as deep a team as Michigan State usually right, has, right. but the Spartans are tough, and they'll be more physical maybe than KU. But I just see KU pulling it out. Yeah, I've got to win in three games. I, I agree with you. And I think, boy, that'd be really good. I mean, it's not – Rhode Island's okay. And, and Tennessee, if they play them or Santa Clara, that would be a decent game there too uh, in that second round. Rhode Island's round. pretty good. Yeah. But, but if KU could get a matchup with Michigan State this early and this close to having been blown out by Kentucky – and then go win that. It would make them, you know, their confidence would go up, I think, and feel good about, okay, we're, we didn't fall that far. We're still one of the big dogs. And here. really, it would be like the consolation prize for the Champions Classic. Those are the yeah. two teams that lost. Great point. Michigan State by only 10 against Duke, and Duke is loaded. So that's going to be a tough game. It'll be interesting to see who's favored in that game if it happens. If it happens. It'll be three games in four days, though. I don't know if you knew that yet. <laughs> Hopefully you're paying attention These out kids there. play four games in one day in AAU. That's true. That's true. It'll be no big deal. Uh, let's go with primetime picks then. Um, football first. Who's your primetime pick in Manhattan on the gridiron? I'm going to go way, way off the grid here, and I'm going to say Courtney Arnick. I like that. I actually uh, almost thought about him. He's coming along, and he, he flies to the football and I think that it would be huge for him to have a huge day in the last game of the season. I love Looking that. Looking forward pick. to next year. That's my favorite pick of the football season. <laughs>
Even more so than the four times you picked Tony Pearson. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I think Tony made me look good a couple times. Yeah, he did. Maybe. He did. He's legit for sure. Uh, I'm I'm gonna stick with that same position, but I did. I really did almost pick Arnick. That's wow. funny. I might have been trying too hard because my pick is Ben Heaney. The last time he played in Manhattan, he chased down Colin Klein on the goal line right before halftime in what was one of the more fantastic plays I've ever seen. It was a big play in the game. Didn't end up doing much, but it was huge at the time. And that's the signature Ben Haney play, if you ask me. It is. I mean, that's the one he'll be remembered for. And it's also a signature play in that KU football in recent years hasn't been able to carry momentum. Right. I think they did carry momentum from Iowa State to TCU. But look at last year when they beat West Virginia and they get smoked right. two games in right. a row by Iowa State and K-State. So I think in, it, it, here's a great player making a great play, just wasn't surrounded by enough talent and passion yeah. to make it happen. Now they've got the passion. They, they don't have the – they have some talent, certainly no depth whatsoever, and that's not going to get any better next year. Yeah, that's. I think this game is really interesting because of – a bunch of things. It comes on the heels of OU is one. But I think the last time that this game mattered like this was when Kerry Meyer and Jake Sharp and those kinds of guys, Kansans, were on the roster. And now you got Ben Heaney and a Kansas coach in Clint Bowen leading this team. It, it just makes me think it's going to be more competitive. And, you know, it, it couldn't be much less competitive than we've seen the last five, four or five years. Well, Las Vegas put it at something like 27 and a half, 28 and a half. Yeah. Right, so they they disagree, but they've uh, they've been what two and five so far is, is the is the Vegas? updated yeah yeah uh, Bones five and two against the spread there That's you go correct. so six and two would look a lot better than five and three it would it would um, all right well let's finish it off as always with the most obnoxious man in sports <laughs> and I'm gonna let you pick and I think it's a good one this would be like choosing John Heisman to win the Heisman Trophy. Uh, or Jerry West to do something in the NBA, maybe? To be, yeah, like to be a logo. MVP. <laughs> there you go. All right, go for uh, it. <laughs> all right. My most obnoxious man in sports this week is Johnny Manziel. Wow, it finally happened. Well, players Our do. poster boy. Do get accused of being in tussles at bars, and I'm always on Barkley's side when he, when he is in one because Barkley's a reasonable guy. So someone's being a jerk if he gets in a yeah, tussle, yeah. in my mind. Matt Barkley, right? At, uh, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> And my problem isn't with Manziel being part of a, a, a fracas at a bar. It's that he was with his entourage. And I got news for you, Johnny. When you're a backup who seldom gets into a game, you're not allowed to have an entourage. Right. So the fact that he has an entourage makes Johnny Manziel the most obnoxious man in sports this week. Finally, I'm so psyched that that happened. It's been long overdue. Our whiz bang behind the camera came up with that as the title slide in this graphic for, for most obnoxious man, and he finally happened. Yeah. It's and, awesome. Good for him. You know, and, and maybe this would also, John Heisman maybe could get it if he were still alive because Manziel got the Heisman. I get it. I get yeah. that. Yeah, and he man. was, supposedly he was kind of a lout John Heisman. Yeah? Yeah, I've read about him, and he's... Just not a good guy. Wow, that's unfortunate. Yeah. You hear that more often than not, though, don't you? Well, with trophies. <laughs> not uh, trophies. Uh, just... Lord Stanley was a fine gentleman. Yeah, a lord. Yeah. Great man. If that's who it was named after. I yeah, no it used to be like this big, you know? Yeah, but then they, they had rings. And right. I touched the... Uh, I, like touched it in the you're not guy. supposed to yeah, yeah i didn't know that yeah, no you're not supposed to and it, he was it. oh he had white gloves and got out his white handkerchief and he gave me the snobbiest yeah. look oh, that's serious business i mean yeah two things you either have to win the cup to touch it or you have to grow a barry melrose mullet and if you can pull either of those off my hat's off i, to I you. don't want to pull off one of them <laughs> and i'm physically incapable of pulling off the other one could, and but this cup you could grow a mullet no, nah, I could physically. Yeah, the other <laughs> way I get it. But uh, this has been at the bottom of swimming pools. Yeah. And, you know, they have wild it's parties so out of cool. it, but they earn the right to touch right. it and drink from it. It's cool. With the, yeah, I love hearing those stories that yeah. they do. All right, well, my obnoxious man in sports this week, also from the NFL, uh, Detroit Lions Imagine that. lineman Dominic Rayola, who on the last snap of a 34 nothing or 34-9 blowout against New England – 
uh, dove, targeted the guy's knees. Uh, Zach Moore, I think his name was, defensive lineman for the Patriots. Patriots had just whipped these guys 34-9, to and all Detroit was doing was kneeling. And this guy targets his knees on a meaningless snap for no reason. Uh, he came up saying, hey, well, they scored with two minutes left. They shouldn't have done that. No, you should have stopped them. You go target your defense. Don't yeah. target the other guy. That's a dirty play. And it's unnecessary, and especially on a team like the Lions that are known for that. You've got to clean up your act there. The NFL is also obnoxious because they didn't find him. And that's a chance they had to really make a statement and say, hey, we don't do that. That's not acceptable. But they didn't find him, and so and Dominic's obnoxious, the NFL's obnoxious, and it's just not helping the sport. And it's more obnoxious even than touching the cup. It is. It is. And, I, you know, I'm not a Patriots fan, so normally I would think, hey, all right, Knock him out, but that's dirty, and and you know. And the Patriots have lousy uniforms. They used to have cool exactly uniforms. Exactly what I was going to say. Way, way long time ago, when they were in the NFL, they were cool uniforms with the Patriot on the side who was and playing down football. Down in the three point stands. Yeah, great. And great now logo. this this stuff looks like it was made on a computer, and it just arena, is, it's bad. arena league logo. It is definitely an arena yeah. league look, and it's just bad. I know Patriots fans associate that with the uh, Super Bowl titles and Tom Brady and everything else. Tom Brady deserves to wear a cool uniform for one year. they got to scrap those uniforms and go back to the old helmets and have a, a just more of a traditional look. I'm afraid if Tom Brady were in charge of picking the uniform, though. it would Maybe the helmet would be cool, but everything else would be a little scary. Fur and, you know. Maybe Giselle on the side yeah, of the helmet. Yeah, be, I don't know that we could trust Tommy to do that, but that's all right. Uh, that's nope, all the time nope. we have. Why'd you call him Tommy? I just heard that from a guy I know. <laughs> Tom Brady, first spokesman for Ugg boots and other things. I guess we'll leave him alone. There's no reason You're to wear jealous. that stuff. Yeah, no, no, no. Yes, I don't want to wear fur. <laughs> this is enough. All right, thanks for checking out KU Sports Extra. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And real quick, before we sign off, special props to our whiz-bang behind the camera, Benton Smith. The for, Bentonian. Indeed. For welcoming his new daughter into the world Aviva, or how do you say it? You say Viva Aviva. There you go. Congratulations to Ben and his wife. Congratulations to you guys for making it through another episode of KU Sports Extra. If you did. We'll talk to you next week.